Hey, what's going on? Well, I just wanted to do a, a video response for uh, Brian uh, for doing the uh, wedding uh, planner video. And uh, actually, my Facebook page is what sparked him to do that. So uh, before we get into that, I just want to read my, my Facebook posting that uh, got him interested in talking about that. So you you know you can uh, comment on this all you want to, and we'll talk about that. I'll talk about my reasonings on why I made that uh, Facebook page here in just a second. But first of all, here's the uh, Facebook um, uh, message itself, okay, the posting that I put on my wall. Okay, I said, why do some wedding coordinators think that we DJs don't know what we're doing? Uh, our whole job is planning wedding receptions, yet some coordinators think it's a good idea to set up time schedules, stop the open dancing, and do the cake cutting, and make the whole evening so choppy. We need a seminar in Vegas on how to deal with coordinators who try to take over our job. Okay, well, first of all, what is our job? Well, our job as DJs is not just to handle the music, as I've always said. Okay, a lot of folks, and you know, some of these brides, you got to think about this for a second. They don't deal with uh, professional mobile DJs on a regular basis. They may think of, the, of a DJ as somebody that they see at their local skating rink or, you know, maybe their middle school dance or something like that. They may think that the DJ just comes and just sets up music and uh, plays for about three or four hours and leaves. They don't really think of us as planners. And when I say planners, kind of like what Brian said, you know, we're not planners as in, as in decorations or anything like that, but we are planners when it comes to planning a party and the sequence of events and making sure that everything uh, moves smoothly from um, one event to another. And I do want to say that Brian did bring up a lot of good points uh, in that video, and I agree with everything he said. Uh, it's a lot, a lot of great stuff there. So anyway, let's talk about that for a minute. That's what our, our role of D as DJs are, is uh, when we're a professional wedding DJ, we set up everything. But like I said, you know, a lot of brides really don't really think of it that way. They think that maybe their wedding coordinator handles that. Well, now how do I get around that? Well, on my contract, it says that uh, that we are the wedding uh, official wedding reception planners, you know, as far as the sequence of events. And I've also uh, even got it included in my contract, uh, saying that only a, a reception planner prepared by SNDJ Entertainment will be the valid one. And the reason for that is because I don't want to show up at a gig, you know, and get there and get set up about 30 minutes ahead of time and have a wedding coordinator come meet me for the first time and hand me a piece of paper and say, here, here's how we're going to do things. No, that's not how that works because I mean we signed the contract and. Uh, you know, and, and that, that's why I've got that, so it protects me, uh, you know, in, in that regard. But now, I actually talk to the wedding coordinators ahead of time. And uh, usually what I do is I, is I send the bride and groom a wedding information uh, uh, form, and it's got down there a place for them to list their vendors, like their wedding coordinator, their photographer, uh, you know, their caterer. And what I do is once I get uh, the planner set up for the timeline of the events on how we're going to do everything, I send it to all of those uh, vendors so that everybody has a copy of it, everybody knows what we're going to do, when we're going to do it, you know, etc. And, um, you know, so, so usually we're all on the same page. And I usually do that. I, I, I tell the brides and grooms to have it to me no later than two weeks before the wedding. Preferably about a month, but sometimes, you know, two weeks is the absolute minimum. And we like to go ahead and, and do that for that very reason. And, uh, you know, now what, uh, what, what are some things that we need to think about when it comes to planning a wedding reception? Well, I'm going to tell you two things you don't want to do. Okay? Number one, uh, well, actually, I'm going to tell you something you do want to do and something you don't want to do. Number one, when it comes to the open dancing, you don't want to stop the music. Okay, now I've actually had wedding coordinators, I had a couple of them, try to uh, tell the bride and groom that it'd be best to do the cake cutting at the end of the night because people don't want to miss the cake cutting and they're going to stay the entire evening. Well, no, they're not. You know, you know why that is? Because, um, uh, you know, there are a lot of people there that aren't going to be in, into dancing. There's going to be older people there that are, you know, going to, get, going to want to go to bed early. There's going to be people that were small kids and they're not going to want to stay the whole night. So once we get to that open dancing, we want to make sure that we've gotten everything done before then, like the bouquet throw, the garter toss, cake cutting, all that. That's what I tell the brides. I tell them that we want to make sure that uh, we get everything done before we open up that dance floor because, you know, you are going to have people that are going to want to leave and, you know, you, know, you want to make sure that they're still around to uh, see some of those events. So anyway, that's why we do that. So that's uh, something you want to keep in mind for newbie DJs. You want to make sure you get everything done for the open dancing uh, just because you don't want to stop the music once you get into the open dancing because it'll kill your reception. And you also want to make sure that, that most of the guests are still there while, while you, uh, during the, all the major events. That's why you do that. Okay, and, and that's the way I look at it. And uh, you know, I have a lot of brides that see things my way when it, when it comes to that. Now let's talk a, a little bit about uh, my dealings with wedding coordinators and why did I make that post? Well, let me be honest, okay? Most wedding coordinators I work with are wonderful. I mean, you know, they, they let me do my job and, you know, they, they really understand what, where I'm coming from. And, uh, you know, and, and that's, that's usually the way that, that it goes. But I have had about two or three of them, you know, that, that have tried to uh, do my job for me, if that makes any sense. 
Okay, and, and that was really what I was directing to. I was just thinking about that. And I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to make a Facebook page about that, just, or a Facebook posting, and let's just see what, uh, you know, if it generates anything. So, you know, just see how the DJs feel about that. But now I'll tell you some things that I've had happen as far as the wedding uh, coordinators. Had a wedding coordinator one time who uh, set up, uh, tried to get me to set up a time schedule, you know, and all the way down to the minute. And of course, it wasn't going to work. And uh, she said the same thing about the cake cutting. She said, you know, if we do the cake cutting at the very end of the night, people are going to stay, and uh, you know, because they don't want to miss that. And I talked to the bride, and I told her, no, that's not something you want to do. You know, you don't, you don't want to stop the music and uh, you know, do the cake cutting, and then go back into open dancing. You know, you know, like like for another couple more songs and things like that. You know, and I explained that to her, and then, and then you know, the bride saw things my way, and thank goodness her wedding reception wasn't sabotaged, as far as that goes. Had another wedding coordinator, and actually I did a video on this not too long ago, uh, probably about four or five months ago. I was uh, hired to do a wedding. And uh, the bride and groom had hired me about eight or nine months uh, in advance. And we, when I met with the bride and groom, you know, I, I sat down with them and I talked to them. You know, we went over the schedule of events on how I typically plan a wedding reception. I told them, well, you know, we can change things around slightly to, to uh, you know, fit their preferences, whatever they want to do, and you know, all that good stuff. We can do that. But uh, I just explained to them, you know, how, how we normally do things, and she said, okay, that's fine. That, that sounds that sounds great. We like that. We love your light show. We've seen your videos. We like what you're doing, and. Um, and we really like that. So they went ahead and signed the contract. And again, the contract says that uh, you know that, that the DJ serves as the planner of the sequence of events for the reception. Well, about three weeks before the uh, wedding, uh, the bride emailed me and uh, said that uh, you know she sent me a long list of songs, and she said these are the songs we're gonna we're, that we're gonna play. You know, it's probably about a good four or five hours worth of music. And I, I sent her an email back, and I said, "Well, could you do me a favor?" I, I said, "You know, if you look on the wedding information form, it says a, a place there where you can list up to fifteen must-play songs." Okay, fifteen must-play songs. Now, what does that mean when I say fifteen must-play songs? Well, those are the songs that we'll get to uh, first. You know, the bride and groom's preferences. The the first uh, songs there. Uh, they're, they're the ones that we put first priority to. And then I tell the brides and grooms that they can make me unlimited, you know, secondary songs. You know, there are songs that we'd like to hear, but if you can't play them, no big deal. Okay? And uh, usually what I do is I take those lists and I mix it with the requests from the guest. And that always seems to work out really well. Okay, now back to what I was saying. I was uh, sitting here on Facebook. My girlfriend I wanted to chat with me just a few minutes, so I went ahead and chatted with her. Now, what I was saying about the 15 Must Play songs, now what is that all about? Well, what that what I do on my wedding information form is I tell them to list 15 uh, Must Play songs. Those are songs I get to first. Those are the ones I make sure I have and I make sure that we play you know, pretty much right off the bat. Then, they can make me unlimited secondary songs. And what I do is I normally take both those lists and mix them with requests from your guests. Well, now this particular bride said uh, three weeks before her wedding, no, I don't want my guests making any requests. We want to, you know, program all the music for the whole four or five hours, however long the reception was going to be. But I don't want any of my guests making requests. And we decided we don't want any lights, and we don't want you doing any MCing either. Basically, they wanted me to come and just set up and play music. Well, I sent an email back, and I said, "Look, you might want to rethink that." I said because, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to making requests, if your guests can't make the re make requests, we play music that they don't like, they're going to leave. I mean, it's just that simple. That's what's going to end up happening. And um, you know, you know, you really want to make sure that that you uh, that we play music that's going to get people out there on the dance floor. And I've looked over the songs that you got, and those are not really crowd motivated songs. And you know, what you're wanting me to do, you want me to create this wonderful evening with this custom playlist that you made, and uh, uh, you know, it's not going to get people out there dancing. So uh, you know, I tried to tell her that. Well, uh, about maybe 30 minutes later, her wedding coordinator called me and uh, said, well, you know what, you need to quit telling her that, you need to do what she says, she said she didn't want all that, you know, you just need to do that. And I said, look, my job is to not only, uh, you, know, you know, tell brides and grooms, uh, you know, what, um, you know what, what things work, but also tell them what's not going to work. And I see something that's going to sabotage her reception, and, and to me, you know, yeah, we want to do what the bride and groom wants. That's, that's definitely, you know, that's our ultimate goal for all of us. But at the same time, if we see something that they're going to do that's going to sabotage their reception, we need to tell them that too because, you know, it can come back and bite us in the end. You know what I'm saying? And another thing I started thinking about was I started th thinking about, you know, what that wedding coordinator was saying because she's talking about the custom playlist. She said, well, you know, if people come up requesting songs, why don't you just tell them you don't have it? 
And if they get uh, you know you know uh, upset with you or something like that, you you know you, you just be rude to them and tell them no, don't do that. Well, that's not how I do things. So in the end, I decided to give up that gig. I said, look, you know, uh, I emailed the bride. I said it just sounds to me like a mobile DJ isn't what you want because you don't want us to do our job. You don't want any lights. You don't want any MCing now, and you want a custom playlist. Why don't you just get an iPod and uh, put it on auto and rent two speakers and just let it go? I mean, since that's basically what you want anyway. So. Anyway, I did that, and I sent. I, I backed out of that wedding. And I'm kind of glad I did because I started thinking, you know, what would those other guests have thought? You know, why? You know, if they if they had shown up at that wedding and I didn't have any lights, I wouldn't take any requests. They're gonna be like, okay, what kind of DJ is he for not taking a request? And he doesn't have a light show. He doesn't do any announcing or anything like that. We don't know what's going on. I mean, you know, what kind of DJ is he? And then that would have made me look bad. So I had to look at that. I look at it that way. So anyway, I got out of that particular gig. Now I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you why. Uh, time schedules will never work. Now for me the only time schedule I want to set up is uh, the begin the start time which is the time that they won't be there starting the background music, maybe a time to have dinner ready, and then possibly uh, the end time. That's it. You know that's that's the only time schedule you need. I'm gonna show you uh, a copy of a bad wedding player. Now let me explain where I got this from, okay? Uh, a couple years ago, I was doing a wedding, and I had the bride's sister come up to me at the end of the night. She said, "I love how you did everything. You know, you're uh, you were just so organized. I love how everything flowed. And, you know, you made my sister real happy." And then she started telling me about her wedding. She'd gotten married about a year before up in Minnesota, I believe it was. And she told me that she let her wedding coordinator plan it out. And she said, "You know, she set up a time schedule, and she said it just ruined my reception." And she said she's walking around with with a clipboard, you know, saying we got to keep things on time. And she said I wasn't really allowed to have fun. So anyway, I asked her, I said, why don't you send me a copy of your uh, reception planner? I'd, I'd like to see it. And she said, okay, I'll do that under one condition. If uh, whenever you meet with the bride and groom, she said, you tell them never set up time schedules because it's going to ruin their reception. So I made a deal with her. I said, okay. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll do that. And I said, you send me your planner and I'm going to take a look at it. When I saw this planner, I could not believe it. And you're going to see why. I'll take a look at this. Okay, now here is the uh, planner that was set up by that uh, wedding coordinator up north. And this is what the bride said she hated. Now, when I looked at this, I thought, how in the world could anybody possibly have had fun with this? Let's just look at that. Okay, 5.30, you know, the reception begins. Well, I can understand that. There's nothing wrong with that. 6 o'clock, the bride and groom join the reception. Okay, well, how do they know that the bride and groom are going to be ready to join the reception right at 6 o'clock? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you, know, you don't know how long it's going to take your uh, pictures or anything like that. That's what I try to tell the brides and grooms. You know, take your time on your pictures. You don't want to feel rushed on that. But look at this. 6.05, introduction to the wedding party. 6.10, first dance. 6.15, father bride dance. 6.20, mother groom dance. Okay, then 6.25, start dinner. 7.20, more pictures with the bride and groom. Then at 7.30, you start the open dancing. Well, see, you don't know how long it's going to take those, those people to eat. You know, you, you can't time that stuff out. 8.30, do the bouquet throw and the guard toss, meaning we stop the open dancing for that, okay? 8.45, more open dancing for 15 minutes, then stop the music and do the uh, toast and the cake cutting down there. Now, you see what I'm talking about there? I mean, that, you know, 9 o'clock at night doing the toast and the cake cutting, well, probably by that time, most uh, everybody, at least the older folks, the kids with uh, the people with kids, had already left. So, I mean, so that wasn't going to work out good. And uh, then you see how they, you know, stop, uh, you know, after they do the toast and the cake cutting, do more open dancing, then the money dance at 9.45. 10 o'clock, the last dance, and then the uh, you know the guests line up for the farewell of the couple, and then the end of the reception. But you see how that's just set up. It's just so choppy, and I mean you know she's got everything timed down to the minute. I just could not see how anybody could have had fun at that because you know the bride was probably looking at her watch. In fact, she was told me she was looking at her watch the whole night and said she could not enjoy her reception. So um, yeah, I take this to any consultations that that I go to with the brides and grooms, and I mention that to them. I say, look, this is something you don't want to do. So, there you go. I hope you got uh, something out of that. And, and again, uh, Brian, I just want to say I really did like your video and you did, really did bring up a good point. And, uh, uh, you know, in conclusion, uh, when it comes down to it, just always be polite to wedding coordinators. But at the same time, let them know that we normally are the ones that, that plan the uh, reception out and we plan the sequence of events. And most of them, we usually go along with that. You know, if, if you're a professional and uh, you know what you're doing and just, uh, you know, kind of explain your side of it and, and why things will work and why things won't work. And uh, normally it'll do well, but don't ever go to them with attitude. That's the best advice I can give you. So until next time, practice and enjoy.